Shoes can easily change the mood of an outfit, but they're also an accessory that can easily ruin an outfit if we don't choose the right one. So in today's video, I want to show you five tips that I like to use to complete an outfit with the right shoe. Sometimes my outfits could look a little bit better if I chose a nude strappy sandal or a cute little sling bag. I don't own a car, so I walk absolutely everywhere and my shoes have to be practical. So that's the reason I do lean more towards a chunkier style. I'm super excited in today's video to be working with Farfetch. You can find a lot of the shoes I'm styling today on Farfetch, whether that is a pair of Vasia sneakers or New Balances. Um, I've also got some ancient Greek sandals I love, Heru shoes, Todd's, and you can find all of these brands on Farfetch. With Farfetch, they ship to you from independent boutiques from around the world, and the selection I think is just incredible. I have a discount code with them today for full price and sale items when you use the code HELENJ. And I'll have the specific code savings and details down below. My first tip so you can better match your shoes to your outfit is to split up your shoes into two categories. Divide them into slim, or chunky. Let me give you some examples. This is a very popular style of summer shoe. It's got a very thin sole and very minimal straps. This would obviously be in the slim section. If I look at something very contrasting, these are the Heru shoes. These are a slip-on shoe. They've got a chunkier, more substantial sole, and this would definitely fit into my chunky shoe section. As far as closed toe shoes go, your dainty little ballet flat would definitely go into the slim section, as with loafers with a thin sole. I don't own a lot of these shoes as I previously mentioned, but I do own quite a few pairs of chunkier loafers. These have the more substantial sole, and these will go in the chunky section. As far as shoes go, sneakers in general are very chunky. But even in sneakers, I still like to divide them into slim and chunky. The white pair here look a lot more sleek on. They taper a little bit more at the front, and these I will consider a slim sneaker. New Balances, on the other hand, are your definition of a chunkier shoe. They've got a much rounder shape, got a much bigger sole, and everything about it is just a little bit rounder, larger compared to the Vages. Let's move on to some styling and you'll see exactly why we bothered to divide our shoes into the two categories. In this outfit, I'm already wearing a boxier top and I've got these flowy, looser trousers. So because a lot of pieces are already oversized, I feel like out of these two shoe options, if I was doing a lot of walking that day, I might go for the chunkier shoe option. But in terms of which one looks better, the daintier shoe definitely feels more balancing. In an outfit, I don't like when everything is oversized. I don't like when everything is fitted. It looks the best when there is a balance of the two. So in this case, the daintier shoe is more balancing. If I change out the skirt in this outfit, in this case, when I compare the shoes, I feel like it doesn't matter as much which one I wear. Because in this outfit, the top is already more boxy, but the skirt is more balancing. So I've already got both proportions in the look. And I find that in this case, I'm more likely to go for the chunkier shoe because that is a more comfortable option that I would prefer to wear all day. One of my favorite ways to wear this for summer is to pair the skirt with a chunkier sandal. I can walk all day in these chunkier styles and this is just a really comfortable, practical look for the summer. Keeping the same outfit, let's compare the two sneakers. I don't often pair skirts with my New Balances because they are so bulky. Sneakers in general, remember, are already chunkier. So I feel like the white pair we can just get away with, but the blue pair becomes a little bit too extreme. The white tapers in, it's a very clean look, and I think it actually looks quite nice with this outfit on those heavy walking days. I'll show you a bit later how I like to style the blue shoes, but most of the time it's with different trousers. Finally, I change into a slimmer outfit here. A more fitted t-shirt and another one of these little bias skirts. I wear these skirts all the time, which is why I feature them a lot in today's video. So with this outfit, the whole silhouette is quite slim. And these are the perfect type of outfits that I like to wear with chunkier shoes. If I paired it with a daintier shoe, it will create a very feminine and dainty look which could be really beautiful but for my own style I like that more contrasting finish so my chunky sandals chunky loafers the Heru shoes I think would all go really really well with this type of outfit every Sunday I go on a bit of a day trip whether that is into the country or just for um, a bit of a short hike and on these days I always start with my shoe first because there's nothing worse than getting to your shoe and realizing all your sneakers 
don't look good or all your walking shoes don't look good. Starting with my New Balance shoes, I know that if I'm wearing these chunkier sneakers, then I usually like to match it with a flowy trouser. These silk trousers are a really great option because they're also really light and comfortable, perfect for a day where I'll be out walking. It's really the pant or skirt combination and the shoe that I pay the most attention to when I'm styling shoes. If I'm doing a lot of walking but I'm still going to be in the city, I might start with this Heru shoe. Working backwards, because this shoe is more chunky, I've paired it with that navy skirt I love to wear. This pairing of the skirt and shoe is one of my favourites because there is still a lot of balance even though we've got a chunkier, more statement shoe. Working backwards, I've gone for the same top and I've gone for a bag with a chain strap just so that it brings a bit of daintiness and we don't have another thicker strap to add more oversize into the look. In the summer, I often start my outfits with a chunky sandal. This is a sandal that I can do lots of walking in and I'm ultra comfortable in on the weekends. So working backwards, I would choose a dress that had a more fitted shape. Something silky and light would be perfect. This brown dress also ties in with the sandal really well because of the colours. Um, the brown colour on the dress and then the tortoise shell on the shoe. With casual summer vibes, sometimes I will also go for a looser shape. So this Doen dress I've had in my wardrobe for years and years. It is looser, it is more oversized, but sometimes I just want that really relaxed look. The dress is really light and I feel like that definitely helps with not making this outfit too, too, too oversized. The bag strap actually adds a bit of definition in the body as well. You can start to see where the body is and where the waist is and that also helps um, to make this outfit more wearable. If you struggle with pairing shoes and you feel like oftentimes um, you have a really amazing outfit and it's ruined by the shoe, then I also recommend doing this for a while until you feel more confident in knowing which shoe pairs with which skirt or which pants in your wardrobe. I recently decided to pick up a few new pairs of shoes. I feel like I tend to be pretty good in my collection where I wear pretty much everything I own. Everything is on the shelf um, when you enter the apartment and everything I wear. I did get these shoes from Farfetch, so I will again link to my code down below if you have a pair of shoes on your wish list for the summer or maybe a pair of loafers you've been eyeing for a long time you can go check out the code down below. For a very long time, I've loved the aesthetic of Heru shoes, but my last pair didn't really work out for me because I found that it wasn't as hard wearing as I needed my shoe to be. So I did decide to go for the chunkier option and I feel like it has a slightly more masculine design and shape. So I love pairing it with those really feminine little skirts that are more fitted. I'm normally a size 37 and a half. If a brand doesn't do half sizes, I'll always go up to 38. This is a 30A and it fits me perfectly. For years now, I've been a huge fan of ancient Greek sandals and it all started with my last pair. So I'm actually gonna grab them to show you. These have been my go-to summer shoes over the last two or three years, meaning that I wear them most days in the summer. These ones I feel like look a little bit more put together compared to the more casual style of my last pair. It's got the two thicker straps and then it's got these tortoise shell little wings. These shoes have a rubber, almost foam sole. So it is really, really quite soft and comfortable to wear. They're also handmade in Greece, which is um, really, really nice. I'm wearing these in the 30A and they fit me perfectly. If you're in between sizes, I definitely recommend sizing up. Even if you're not in between sizes, if you like there to be a bit more space at the back, I think you can also size up in this particular style. The final pair today are these Todd's loafers. So when I was in Italy last year, I went to an outlet for Todd's and I picked up these brown suede loafers which are one of the most comfortable shoes I've worn. So I feel like I've just discovered that for my wider foot and for my like walking habits, Todd's are the loafers for me. Since I do have like a brown suede pair, I decided to go for a black this time round. I feel like this matte gold finish looks really, really nice against the shinier black shoe. My brown style is pretty much exactly the same shoe. It fits in exactly the same way, it has the same sole. So I already know that these are going to be good in terms of durability and comfort since I own the brown pair. Especially if you have a wider foot, I feel like Todd's shoes fit me extremely well and I just go for my true size, which is a 37 and a half. My third style tip for matching your shoe to your outfit is related to color. There's a few kind of little tips within this one, but let's start with the one that I like to do the most. I often like to match my shoe 
to the depth of color of my pants. One way I like to do this is just to wear a column of color. So for example, one color head to toe. This is a really easy and flattering way to do an outfit because you're not breaking up any lines and therefore elongating the body. This is quite limiting and obviously we don't always want to be doing this. Something else I like to do is just to match the shoe to the depth of color of my bottom. In this outfit, I'm wearing black pants and a white top. So instead of going for a white sneaker or a white shoe, I've gone for a black shoe. And what this does is that it elongates the line of the leg and you don't break up the line of the leg with where the shoe starts. This is a really simple way to match my shoe to my outfit and I always find that a matching depth of color for the shoe to the pant looks very natural. I say depth of color because you can't always match the exact tone of your pant to your shoe. So I just like to go for the closest um, option. To show you the flip side, if I did an opposite shoe, so a white skirt and a black shoe, this is what the outfit would look like. This is the way a lot of stylists would recommend me to dress because it creates a lot of cohesion in the outfit. They'll say that by matching your top to your shoe, your eye kind of looks around the outfit and everything matches. But this is really just not my style at all. I actually really don't like the matchy matchiness. And in my opinion, it's just not as flattering. This is the way that I would wear it. If I'm wearing black on top, white on the bottom, I would go for a nude shoe because it's more in the same depth and color of the skirt. This creates a gradient of color. And I find this way of dressing and of matching shoes to be a lot more flattering and a lot more natural to my eye. Ultimately, it's one of those things where you don't have to pick one or the other, you can do both and just use both of them as ways to help you match your shoes to your outfit. In another example, I'm wearing a black tee, blue jeans, and then we're going back to the black. So what I said before, I usually like to go for the gradient and instead I might go for white, blue, and then black. So we're getting from lightest to darkest, or we can do darkest to lightest. But either way, I like that to be almost like a continuation of color versus um, the top and the shoes matching. This again comes down to personal style. I don't like a very perfectly matching, um, matchy matchy outfit. So this is probably why I don't like that matching of top and shoe. But you can use whatever works for you out of these two options um, to match color wise your shoe to your outfit. If you're enjoying today's video and you find these tips helpful, I would love for you to go give this video a like um, and consider subscribing and turning on notifications down below. Tip number four is that I often like to use shoes to add friction into my outfit and basically use shoes to change the mood of an outfit, which is what I started today's video talking about. I start off with this outfit that could easily look like I'm going to work. If I was working in an office, I would put a blazer over this and there would be absolutely nothing wrong with this outfit. But if I wanted to wear it for a more casual workplace or just a casual day, then I want to dress it down a notch. Getting rid of the heel and then going for an open toe shoe is exactly what I feel like this outfit needs to take it from office to weekend. Maybe like office to dinner. It's the same thing with blazers. Whenever I wear a blazer with a heel, I immediately feel like I'm going to work. And it's probably because for years, this is what I wore to work. So going for that same open toe shoe, I think makes the biggest difference in transforming this look. Even if it's not a blazer, even if it's just a more polished jacket, so for example, a tweed jacket, the same thing still applies. I would still go for that open toe shoe to make it feel more casual, more effortless and laid back as well. Let's talk about the opposite scenario. So in this outfit, I'm wearing some jeans and sneakers. If I wanted to change the mood of the outfit, transform it into something that's a little bit more polished, then I'll just swap out the sneakers for the loafers. As much as I do love bags and jewelry, I feel like the transformation of shoes is to a whole new level because you can just take that one accessory and completely change the vibe of a look. My final tip today is to talk about dresses and skirts and what shoe I would pair with them. A lot of popular dresses and skirts for summer tend to have a bit more volume on the bottom. So think your A-line skirts or dresses, and then also your ruffled, tiered dresses and skirts. Anything that has volume right at the bottom, I recommend styling with a daintier shoe. So I'm gonna go really extreme first. I've got this really ruffled, tiered skirt from Cezanne, and I think it's really beautiful, but it doesn't work with my chunky shoes. You can see here that the chunky shoe just makes it look way too heavy on the bottom and makes the proportions feel off balance. If I roll the skirt up a bit so you can see a little bit of ankle, I feel like it improves the look 
but it's still not ideal. The shoe that goes best with this outfit would be a nude sandal because it gives me a bit of lift so I feel like it looks lighter at the bottom and then the new color obviously looks lighter as well compared to the heavier black. This white skirt here is less dramatic, but I feel like the same thing applies. It's got this A-line shape, so it's quite wide right at the bottom. If I pair on my chunky black shoes, I feel like it is too much. So one step in the right direction would be my black shoes that are daintier. These I feel like look a lot more balancing, and it's not as bottom heavy. And then again, the best option would be the nude sandals again, because they do look the lightest in both color and shape. If you like your chunky shoes, but you also love these A-line silhouettes, my recommendation is to go for a slightly shorter length. So instead of it being maxi like these are, I would just suggest going a few centimeters up and making sure that you can see your ankles. That makes a big difference. And then you can go for a slightly chunkier option if these were slightly shorter and your ankles were showing. I also just recommend going for a more subtle A-line as opposed to these more dramatic ruffled styles because it will make it a lot more wearable if you like to wear a lot of flat or more chunky shoes. These are my five favorite tips that I like to use to match my shoe to my outfit. I'd love to hear down below what are some of your favorite ways to match your shoe to your outfit. And even if they're very different to what I use, I'm always willing to try something new, so let me know in the comments down below. Thank you to Farfetch for working with me in today's video. You can use my code Helen with a letter J to get an additional discount on full price and sale items. And I'll have all the information to that discount code down below. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love for you to go give it a like. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see when I post new videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.